Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at linear regression and the correlation coefficient. To start out with, let's review what linear regression is all about and what it means by a line of best fit. That's all defined for us up here. So if you look at that, it says the line of best fit is also known as the least squares line or regression line. So you're going to see those terms used interchangeably. They all mean the same thing. So if in your assignment, if they ask you to find the regression line or if they ask you to find the least squares line, it means the same as that line of best fit. Now the line of best fit has some different properties. The first property is that it's going to minimize the sum of the squared residuals. Remember we learned about squared residuals in the previous lesson. All that means in that first property is that we want to make sure that the line goes through the center of the data. We don't want it to be... Uh, we don't want the points to be um, kind of skewed with the data. Um, you want to make sure that it goes through the center. So you're minimizing the square of the residuals. The other thing that's really important is you have to find, or one of the points on the line should be the X bar, Y bar. Now what does that mean? Well, you should recognize that from the previous chapter. Remember when we have that little bar above the X, or in this case the X and the Y, it means the average or the mean. So the x bar, y bar, that's referring to the mean. If you were to take up or take and add up all the x values and divide by the number of values we have, so you'd find the mean of the x values and do the same thing for the y values. That would give you the mean of the x, the mean of the y would give you a coordinate, and that sh coordinate should be on that line of best fit. The other thing that they point out, one of the properties, is that the slope and y intercept should be able to be computed from the data points. In other words, when you see that line of best fit, you should be able to determine from that line of best fit what the uh, y-intercept is and what the slope is, which is going to be pretty easy because your calculator will do that for you, which we'll see in the next video, um, and it's automatically going to be in slope-intercept form. Now, some other things that we're going to need to draw out from that information is the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient measures the strength of the relationship between the data that we're graphing. Now, we use the letter R to represent the correlation coefficient. So in a little bit, in the next video, when you go to do this on your calculator, your calculator it won't say correlation coefficient equals. It'll give you the R value. So that R value is the correlation coefficient. You need to remember that. Well, let's look at what does that correlation coefficient, what does that value for R tell us? Well, that's what we're going to look at next here, let me scroll up so we can see this better. So you're going to see here that the correlation coefficient tells us two things. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to tell us if the graph is increasing or decreasing. So it's going to tell us the direction of the graph. If the R value is positive, that means as you read the graph from left to right, that the graph is increasing. If the value for R is negative, that tells us that the value, the graph from left to right would be going down, it'd be decreasing. Kind of like what we have over here with those two uh, values for R that are straight lines. You can see that the first one there is R equals a positive one and the other one is R equals a negative one. And you can see that the positive one is increasing from left to right and the negative one is decreasing from left to right. Now the other thing, so not only does the R value tell us the direction of the graph, but it tells the magnitude referring to the value, the actual number for R, indicates the strength of the relationship. The closer that the value for R is to 1, the stronger the relationship is between those values. So if you have exactly 1, that means we have a perfectly strong negative or perfect uh, relationship there between those two values. But if you have a decimal like 0.9, that means it's a really strong relationship between those uh, between the two variables that we're looking at. If you have a smaller value for R, like let's say your R is 0.3, that means it's a pretty weak relationship. There's some relationship there, but it's pretty weak. So the closer you get to zero, the weaker the relationship. If you have exactly zero, like you can see here from this graph, if you have exactly zero, that means that there is no relationship. Now let's look at something that will help us identify the relationships here. Let's get look at a visual aid. So here's this visual aid that will help you as you kind of determine what R means. So it's showing exactly what I was just talking about. So you can see that uh, if you have a value of R that's zero right in the middle, then you know that there is no relationship. 
As you go away from that, whether it's to the left or to the right, uh, it's going to either become a positive or a negative relationship, meaning a, uh, it's going to increase from left to right or um, decrease from left to right. But the closer that you get to 1, the stronger the relationship is. Now, if you notice outside the 1s, it says it's impossible. That means you'll never have a value for r that's greater than 1. That's impossible to happen. It's got to be between 0 and 1, or negative 1, I should say. So that pretty much sums up what the value for r is. In the next video, you're going to see how to do this and how to determine what that value for r is on your calculator. So go ahead and watch that video, and then hopefully that will explain things for you to be able to uh, do your assignment. So with that, good luck.